with a barbed wire wrap bat, a leather jacket, and the foulest mouth in comic history. He's mean, he's vicious, and he's got the zombie apocalypse on lock. This is Know Your Villains, Negan. We find out in Here's Negan's numbers 1 through 16 that prior to the zombie apocalypse, the charismatic, overly violent leader of the saviors was actually a high school gym teacher, albeit a foul-mouthed and competitive one. Things would go bad rather quickly for Negan, as his wife Lucille would collapse in front of him, he would rush her to the hospital only to learn she's suffering from cancer. His mistress on the side would ditch him, and then the outbreak would occur, and sadly, Negan would be forced to watch his wife die, and then horrifically turn. With no reason to stay, Negan leaves the hospital, running into a young stranger who was trapped by walkers. Negan manages to save the young man, however, it proves all for naught. Negan would then wander, finding new companions, and then losing them, finding new ones again, and then losing them again, until he finally has enough and decides he's better off on his own. It's not long after this that he's found by Dwight. Dwight, as it turns out, is the leader of a small group of survivors, though Negan is far from impressed. Over time, and after a few dire situations, Negan, through cunning leadership and sheer tenacity, overtakes Dwight as the leader of the group. And really, who could blame them? Compare this to this. While scavenging through a store, Negan would find his trademark leather jacket. Also while there, his group would cross paths with another group. Negan decides to welcome these new people in with his usual expletive rich humor. Later that same night, Negan offers his jacket to a young woman. Upon seeing this, the leader of the other group would make his final mistake in life by telling Negan that he can sample the goods if he wants. Negan, knowing exactly what the man meant, informed him that that will no longer be happening. The other guy refused, so Negan beat his head in with a baseball bat. After doing this, we would watch as Lucille, Negan's iconic weapon, was born. And Negan explains to the group that they now work for him. His group are their saviors. Over time, the saviors, which now had large numbers, would begin forcing their will on other groups, forcing the Hilltop Colony to pay half of their supplies, and in return, the saviors would keep Hilltop's surrounding area clear of the dead. However, if Negan decided he wasn't getting sufficient supplies, there would be hell to pay. Eventually, the Walking Dead poster boy, Rick Grimes, would find out about these arrangements and attempt to end them. His group would even manage to kill a few saviors. But he made a huge mistake. He messed with Negan. And in The Walking Dead issue number 100, Negan and the Shaviors would ambush Rick and his group and show them just how bad a mistake that was. Negan would unleash a terrifying F-word rich monologue, introducing Lucille, informing them that he was going to beat the holy hell out of them with that bat, and then initiating one of the most intense games of any mini miny mo ever ending with Glenn. He would then viciously crack Glenn over the head with Lucille, then mercilessly mock him before beating him to death. With Glenn's mangled skull and dead corpse still right there, Negan informed the rest of the group that he would show up in one week to collect half of everything they own, and then just leaves them there with Glenn's body. One week later, Negan shows up at the Alexandria safe zone to make a strong first impression. He forces Rick to carry Lucille and has his people scavenge through everyone's house. He takes their medical supplies and before leaving, whispers that iconic line about sliding certain things in certain places and Rick thanking him for it. After this, Negan heads back to his and his group's home, the Sanctuary. Unbeknownst to them though, they have a stowaway. Rick's son, Carl Grimes. Upon arriving at the sanctuary, Carl pops out and guns down six saviors, attempting to shoot Negan but losing control of his gun. Negan, instead of letting Dwight kill him, says, is that any way to treat our guests? He would show Carl around the sanctuary, show how he deals with his people, show how many wives he has, and then takes Carl to his private quarters, and after some small talk, orders Carl to remove the bandage that covers his exposed eye socket that resulted from him being shot in the face. But perhaps most disturbing, he then shows what happens if one of his men should commit adultery with one of Negan's wives. A red hot iron to the side of the face. 
permanently disfiguring and scarring the poor victim named Mark. After this, Negan decides to be a good neighbor and take Carl back to Alexandria. And while headed there, they find Rick, who is actually out searching for Carl. Negan then tells Rick how eager he is to show what he's done to his son, and Rick, out of anger, attacks Negan. Before Negan reveals that Carl is fine, and Negan then clarifies that he's eager to show Rick that he's done nothing to his son. After this, however, Negan would begin pushing his luck. He would return to Alexandria ahead of schedule, only to be informed that supplies were low and Rick was out looking for more. So Negan decided to make himself at home and wait for Rick to return. He would have an altercation with an Alexandria resident, which would result in him being slapped. But even with several members of his group offering to kill the woman, he decided against it. After this, he's approached by Spencer Monroe, who thought it would be a good idea to ask Negan to put him in control of Alexandria after he killed Rick. Negan is highly offended by this. Since Spencer came to him while Rick was away, he must be a coward. And even though Rick may hate Negan, Rick has guts. Negan then slashes Spencer's stomach open, killing him almost instantly. Causing Spencer's guts to spill out onto the ground, Negan then remarks, well he had guts after all. He then orders one of his men to clean this mess up before any kid sees it. Uh, upon his return, Rick immediately confronts Negan about Spencer going as far as to threaten Negan if he doesn't tell him what he wants to know. Negan then grabs Lucille and lays a lyrical beatdown on Rick, informing him of what Carl had done and that he had returned him, and then letting him know that Spencer wanted to kill him and replace him. Negan then decides to leave, though at first deciding not to take anything from the Alexandrians, but after the insistence of Rick, departs with half. On the way back to the sanctuary, Negan sees that Rick and some of the others are following them. Then his driver is shot and killed. Negan then gets out and sees Rick with a gun pointed straight at him. A gunshot is heard and Rick's gun is destroyed, along with all the others his group had bought along. Now that's gotta be an empty feeling when you think about it, and it's here where we learn that Negan comes to get supplies he always has a group surround Alexandria and guard the area while he takes what he wants. This is really smart. Negan continues to taunt Rick, eventually leading to Rick attempting to attack him. Though Negan holds him off, but at the same time as this, Carl takes a shot at Negan shooting off part of Lucille, leading Negan's men to open fire on the Alexandria safe zone's walls. But Negan orders them to stop and then demands Carl be thrown over the wall to pay for what he's done. Rick tries to interfere, but Negan easily handles him again. Negan then tells him it's Carl or he'll kill everybody else that came out with Rick instead. Now right as it seemed like Negan's about to crush somebody's skull, Jesus shows up and manages a James Bond rescue, disarming Negan and restraining him, buying time for Ezekiel and his men to attack while Rick and his group escapes. Negan also managed to escape with his men and once back at the sanctuary, he rallies his people telling him they need to remind people who the dominant force in the world is. And then, and then came all out war. Rick would show up at the sanctuary with an army and demand Negan come out. Negan, not even a little bit scared, would taunt him before attempting to undermine Rick's attack using Gregory from the hilltop. When that doesn't work, Negan gets rid of Gregory and all hell breaks loose. Rick's army had led a giant herd of walkers to the sanctuary and at the same time one of Rick's people, a woman named Holly, drives through one of the sanctuary fences allowing the walkers into the sanctuary. Negan orders everyone back inside to regroup but then sees that Holly is still alive and captures her saying, you didn't think you were going to get off that easy now did you? He later tells his men the best way to a man's heart is through his vagina, believing this to be Rick's girlfriend. Though, she tries to argue, Negan sends her away, and he and some of his men start clearing out the walkers. Once completing, Negan then goes to where Holly is being held, but finds one of his men, David, about to rape her. Negan then angrily reminds him that we don't rape, and puts his knife right through David's neck. Later, Negan and the Saviors return to Alexandria. Negan would then throw a grenade over the walls and let the Alexandrians know there's more where that came from, and then demands Rick come and talk. He's even bought Holly back with him. Rick says he'll talk once Holly is back inside of Alexandria, and Negan complies. 
Holly, with a bag over her head, is bought out of the truck, but it turns out to be a trick, as Negan had already had Holly killed and let her turn. With this distraction, Negan orders his men to surround Alexandria and start blowing up everything. While enjoying the destruction, he even remarks to Lucille how much he's enjoying it. They use a grenade as cover and get away with Negan commenting on how they've won. Back at the sanctuary, Negan decides to take things to another level. He starts covering Lucille in walker guts, proclaiming it's the new and improved Lucille. They will be covering their weapons with walker guts so that any injury will become a death sentence. He then orders the saviors to do the same, and they leave for the hilltop, arriving later that day. They decide to attack at sundown, and when sundown arrives, Negan and his men go to the hilltop gates and demand to see Rick. When he is refused, they bust the door down, and the saviors tear into the hilltop. During the battle, Negan and Dwight get separated from the other saviors, and Negan has no idea that Dwight is loading an arrow to attempt to kill him, but when he spots Rick away from the other survivors, he tells Dwight to shoot Rick. No matter where he aims, that muck will make him sick. Dwight is hesitant to do so, but Negan demands to know why he's waiting and screams to shoot Rick. Dwight shoots, hitting Rick in the side, and after this, Negan declares that without him, they're nothing. The next day, Negan arrives at the hilltop gates, shooting into the air. He claims that he's there to accept their surrender and asks them to send out whoever's in charge. To Negan's surprise, Rick comes out of the hilltop's gate. After getting over the shock of seeing him, Negan asks Rick to surrender, to let things go back to the way they were. But Rick refuses. Negan then repeats that he only kills people to make an example and threatens Rick that he will do so again if he's pushed too far. But Rick replies by saying he's the stupidest, well, person still alive. Taken back, Negan asks what he's talking about. Rick goes on to say that they should have pulled their resources and people together. Negan doesn't believe him, saying that with the system he's been using, he is saving lives. Rick tells him that in the current situation, the only ones who are winning are the undead. The only way to get through this is by working together. Negan takes everything in, and Rick says that they can take their supplies, but they must give the survivors something in return. Make supplies of their own to give or trade for others through a system of trade. Negan says he's been wrong all along and that Rick is actually right. Rick then slashes Negan's throat with a knife, responding, good. Caught by surprise, Negan begins bleeding out, but still tackles Rick to the ground and begins beating him. Despite Rick putting up a fight, Negan catches one of Rick's legs and breaks it. He does fall unconscious from blood loss while actually laughing at Rick. Unfortunately, he later awakens in a room at the hilltop to see Rick standing over him. Rick then informs him that he's not going to kill him, but he's going to see how he'd been holding everyone back. He will spend the rest of his life in a jail cell till he dies an old man. Over the next few years, Negan would stay in the cell while building on his relationships with both Carl and Rick. There is an interesting event where after Negan gets a shower and a haircut, he's taken back to his cell and locked in. But wouldn't you know it, they inadvertently left the door unlocked. What does Negan do? He sits there. Later on, when Rick comes to check on him, he finds the door open and Negan smiling at him. Negan taunts him, telling how he could have gotten out and destroyed the whole place, but decided to stay in order to build trust. Rick locks the door, but Negan again pesters him, telling him the only reason he's still alive is so Rick can tell himself he's still a good person showing that even years later, Negan is still as sharp as ever. And then came the Whisperers, the single worst thing a human being could hope to become in the day and age of the Walking Dead. People who go so far as to wear dead walker skins as camouflage, which is disturbing on a level I can only imagine. Problems arise between the Whisperers and the survivors, and war seems inevitable. So Rick, being a sensible and intelligent man, goes to Negan for advice. Brilliant. Rick brings Negan up to speed on everything going on, and Negan advises Rick to keep his own group happy, even if that means lying to him, going off what he knows from his time as leader of the Saviors, some of whom actually disliked him. Rick leaves and Negan just smirks, but when Regan hears the chants and cheers of Rick's name at a later town meeting, Negan just smiles and says, Atta boy.
It wouldn't be long before a very misguided young man named Brandon, who hated not only Rick and Carl, but also the Whispers, would release Negan so that he would help him pit the Whispers and Rick at each other. Negan says he'll think about it. Once away from Alexandria, he stabs Brandon in the chest and moves into Whisperer territory. It doesn't take too awful long for him to draw the attention of the Whisperers, who ambush him, and then take him back to their leader, Alpha. Negan introduces himself and declares his love for Alpha, which is an odd first impression, but Negan is an eccentric guy. Negan starts to live with the Whisperers, and during a night at camp, Negan sees two Whisperers trying to rape a woman. He stops them, but is knocked down. Alpha explains that they allow for these things to happen in order for women to prove their strength. Negan has absolutely no patience for this, and later that same night, Negan and Alpha have a conversation where Negan reveals how dead inside the world has left him, and he knows Alpha is just pretending to have no emotions, causing Alpha to break down. Alpha says that maybe ne Negan does belong with the Whisperers after all. And then boom, out of nowhere, Negan slits Alpha's throat and cuts her head slap off, saying, wait till Rick gets a look at you. A week after disappearing, Negan then turns up with Alpha's decapitated head, showing it to Rick and Andrea, who are both surprised and very hesitant to trust him. Negan reassures him though that's the only thing he's after, trust. Rick agrees to let him out of his cell, but he won't live in the community. He can stay at an outpost with just enough to keep him alive, but he'll have to earn it by fighting against the Whispers, and if he slips up, he will be immediately killed. Negan is then sent out unarmed with Dwight to engage the Whispers. He spends some time trying to get under Dwight's skin, which at one point actually works, but before long a full-blown firefight ensues and still unarmed, Negan expresses his displeasure with the situation. Though at one point another in the group is overtaken by walkers, Negan runs up and ends the walker and takes the gun joining the fight. He then comes to the aid of Dwight, who is in a fight with Beta, the Whisperer in charge. Negan and Beta get to fighting, and Beta begins to get an upper hand. But then Dwight tosses Lucille to Negan, who then swings so hard he breaks Lucille over Beta's back, and you immediately see Negan's anguish. He literally tears up. He then continues to fight with Beta, about to finish him, when he's attacked by two walkers, which allows Beta to escape. Negan and Dwight and the others finish the rest of the walkers, and while on the way back to Alexandria, Negan takes time to bury Lucille. He even laughs, remarking on how he never gave his wife a proper burial. But unfortunately, Dwight rushes him along and they return to Alexandria. Unfortunately, the before mentioned Beta manages to get back to the Whisperer's greatest weapon, a literal sea of walkers. He points them at Alexandria and in no time, Alexandria is completely overrun. Walkers breach the gates, and in the confusion, Rick Grimes is knocked off of his feet, and just when we think we're about to see the end of Rick Grimes, Negan comes to his rescue, grabbing him up off the ground and grabbing a door so that Rick can get inside to safety. While trapped inside together, Negan takes full advantage of a chance to lay his style of verbal smackdown all over Rick, pointing out the fact that no one tried to help Rick as they were all too scared, but he himself actually saved him. The two even share the worst thing they ever did, which turned out to be a very profound conversation. But then, when they notice the crowd of walkers is starting to thin down, we see the epic team up as Negan and Rick Grimes work together, playing the most insane version of Peekaboo, popping in and out of two different doors, killing walkers as hard as they can. And it is awesome! But moving right along, the Alexandrians manage to get rid of all the walkers, and just as they do, the saviors show up being led by Sherry, and they are not there to be nice. They intend on ending their relationship with Alexandria, and more importantly Rick Grimes. While announcing this, she is shocked to see Negan in attendance, who actually smiles and lets everyone know he missed them. While speaking in private, Sherry becomes emboldened and attacks Rick. Trying to defend himself, he inadvertently throws her back, snapping her neck. Tensions begin to run high as the saviors begin to notice, where is Sherry? Once Rick returns, 
and right when it looks like violence is inevitable, Negan steps up and gives one of the greatest F-word laced innuendo rich speeches in comic history. Drawing on his experience as a leader of the Saviors and his love of feet, Negan manages to talk the Saviors down and even convinces them to remain allied with the Alexandrians. After all of this, Rick allows Negan to leave and even permits him some supplies. Though unbeknownst to him, Maggie has sent Dante to track him. She wants to know where he ends up as she has no intention of losing track of him and Dante does just that. Eventually, Negan discovers a bat inside a barn and using part of a barbed wire fence running along the property, he begins creating a new Lucille. While doing this, he's interrupted by Maggie who, while aiming a gun at his head, asks if he has any plans for it. During what's got to be the most tense standoff for Negan since we've met him, he admits to Maggie that he remembers Glenn and even offers the new Lucille for her to use and adding that he won't fight back. When Maggie hesitates, Negan grabs her wrist and pulls the gun to his forehead begging for her to kill him. However, Maggie decides against it stating he'll have to live with what he's done for the rest of his life and she leaves him there. The last image of Negan we see is him getting himself together, putting on his jacket, taking his new Lucille apart and throwing it in a fire, and moving on. And if you didn't have a clue before, you better start acting like you know now. I'm Walter Most Gangster Nerd on YouTube and I'll be seeing you soon enough!